A lot of the time in the NBA, we can predict the champs, especially recently. We know the top players in our league, but still every year we're shocked by a few things. It'll be fun to look back on today's list after the 2018-19 season. A few of these predictions may just flop, but having said that, when your friends are shocked about a player, team, or moment, here's five bold predictions for this NBA season so you can say you saw it coming. Lonzo Ball fans will argue he shouldn't be in the same conversation with Fultz's underwhelming rookie year. Fact is, though, they're last year's top two picks who weren't elite or healthy. Lonzo is better, don't get me wrong. I was impressed with his triple doubles. To be honest, that's about it. But year two is a different world for Lonzo. I'll get right back to him. As for Markel, his experience should go a long way for the questionable confidence. Along with the incompetent Brian Colangelo being there, it was the reported elbow injury and just the overall pressure with the expectations of being that number one pick that brought him down. Sitting out worked for all the other injured picks in Philly. Markel's behind a great leader in Brett Brown and now a thankfully sane along with patient Philly front office despite big expectations. The long range shot I don't think will be consistent for another year. Other than that, his clearly improved mid range shot, impressive length, playmaking talent, and of course experience makes him a valuable defender and contributor for Philly. I predict 13, six and six for faults, 45 plus percent shooting. The guy's headed in the right direction, don't sleep on him. As for Lonzo, he became the number two pick with his dangerous long range ability. Despite the efficiency struggles last season, overall he looked like a guard who at the very least is going to have a long career as a starter. The IQ wasn't a problem for him, knows how to get guys the ball in the right spot, sees the right moment to get other guys going. He's got great size, visibly he got a lot stronger this summer. I understand the hate because of LeVar, but it hasn't been fair for Lonzo. I think he's about to break away from all the LeVar BS in year two. The form was reportedly altered this offseason. I predict he'll play 70 plus games, average 15 points, eight assists, four rebounds, but he'll do it efficiently. 46 plus percent from the floor, 37 to 40% shooting from distance. Don't forget, he gets mentorship and better looks from one of the greatest playmakers of all time. LeBron's voice over LeVar's will be a much needed breath of fresh air. To be honest though, I think Lonzo stopped taking his guidance a long time ago. Right before the four much bolder predictions than that last one, quick shout out to Cooper Fishlock who relates the Butler situation with Minnesota to what could happen with Wall and Howard. Last video I made the point that Dwight and Wall slash Beal's relationship won't be similar to Kobe's disastrous tenure with them. So agree to disagree, appreciate the comment for next vid shout out and to get up on the board in Community Speaks. Stay tuned for today's question, leave your take on it, I pick my favorite answer. We go from maybe the least bold prediction to the most bold prediction on this list. Am I saying the Kings will grab one of the eight playoff seeds? No, I am aware the West is insane. Could they shock everyone and get close? Well, everyone's gonna say they're the same Kings as always. They lost Cousins years ago, and other than their decent rookie, De'Aaron Fox, they got no one talented. First off, De'Aaron has as much potential as any up-and-coming point guard. He'll be much more than decent this upcoming season. The core who you don't know is headlined by one of my favorite shooters in today's NBA, Klay Thompson type potential in my opinion, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Him and Buddy Heald provide the perfect fit next to Fox on the wing, two of the top efficient three point shooters last season. What does De'Aaron Fox do best? Attack relentlessly with his speed. The two guys next to him thrive playing off of the ball and just catching and shooting. Colley Stein's a reliable defender, he's improving his offensive game. Same thing goes for wing Justin Jackson. Some say it's a log jam front court. I think it helps the lack of depth in other areas. Bagley can be their main guy off the bench. Internal competition is a good thing though. Labissiere impresses me as well and will get his share of minutes, but bottom line is, Vladi Divac has done a great job of surrounding Fox with guys he can benefit from and not slow down his development. The man's about to explode, but I predict the story will be the Kings overall. In a deep west, they'll compete for around a 37 to 40 win season, set themselves up for a pick in the top eight to 12. It's expected to be a deep draft class and based off Lottie's good drafting history, after their 2019 pick, the Kings will be recognized as a future threat in the west. This next prediction relies on Giannis's improvement from distance. He shot his best since his rookie year from deep last season, but 70 plus points, the closest since Kobe. It's not gonna come from a majority of three point shots, I'll get back to that. But this generational performance is gonna come from his and ones 
which I'm sure we'll see a lot more of after his strength upgrade. Giannis is an absolute mismatch for everyone. Wait till this man just gets a bit of rhythm and confidence throughout the season. He'll drop the 30 and 40 point games for a little while, maybe the odd 50. Then around game 55, I'm going to say the soon to be 24 year old in his sixth season will show a team's defense, highly ranked or not, that no one can stop him. Devin Booker, of course, has come closest to Kobe's modern day record. I think Giannis can get like 72 to 75. If he's efficient from deep, who knows what could happen, really. Has easily the best footwork in the NBA, flawless size and handling, a generational finisher at the basket. And I can't use another adjective than thunderous to describe his athleticism. If you're a stat nerd and not convinced, here you go. While you're looking at the numbers, lastly, I'll just say, as a Raptors fan, the guy scares me. Obama. Obama who? Obama so. When you grab an offensive rebound, the shot clock now resets to 14. The clear path foul rule is still confusing, and replay review has changed, but only for hostile acts. However, this prediction revolves around the state of the NBA after these rule changes. The number one rule I personally have a problem with that they didn't change is the rip through. If you're not familiar, when defenders keep their hands too close to an offensive player, players tend to rip through into their shooting motion to try and draw the and one. Seems reasonable if a defender is up in your grill like that. Why not allow a player to rip through and get the and one? Problem is, the rule is incredibly blurred. In the rule book, I'm paraphrasing, but it says, when it's clear the offensive player has ripped through and displays a side-to-side -side motion when he rips through, the play is supposed to be called a foul on the floor. An and one is out of the cards in this situation, However, players like Harden, CP3, LeBron always get this and one call. When D'Angelo Russell does this, it's called a foul on the floor. Lowry rarely gets that call. This is infuriating. And of course, blasphemous. In terms of the changes, I think the offensive rebounding reset could draw complaints. Let me know your take on that down below. Overall, I just think the changes in the rules opens the door for controversy. Other rules are going to be complained about and be asked for change as well. It may seem like I'm a Bucks fanatic in this video. Quite honestly, I had four predictions for this video, but when I was prepping my Giannis 70 plus point segment, I thought of the guys around him, Sharpshooter Middleton and Bloodsoe, who I think bounces back from last playoffs embarrassment. But Middleton and Bloodsoe are both entering the prime years of their career. There's no reason to think they won't be the best they've ever been this upcoming season. Middleton's playoffs were nothing short of special in 2018, by the way. 2017's Rookie of the Year, Malcolm Brogdon quietly improved his play as one of the better backup point guards last season. He moves to the starting shooting guard spot. I'll get to the bench this upcoming season in my specific predictions for Milwaukee. But how about the Brooke Lopez edition? I thought it was perfect, but regardless of what your opinion on Lopez is, he's a center that moves rim protectors out to the perimeter. You can't leave the guy alone. Just think about how this impacts Giannis and Bloodsoe. Think about the dangerous rim protectors you're going to be playing a lot. Miles Turner, Embiid, Horford, Whiteside. They would all make it tougher for Giannis, but because of Lopez's three-pointers, Giannis can go wherever he wants. NCAA championship game star Dante DiVincenzo should contribute off the bench. Ilya Sova, another really good three-point shooter. Henson's a starting caliber center. So the combination of all this, combined with Budenholzer taking over as head coach, leads me to believe this team could be as high as number two in the East. And it's too early for playoff predictions, but this is an extremely tough team to beat four times. More cool lists coming up, so if you're new, subscribe. If you have a suggestion for a list, leave it down below. But today's question is, what are your five bold predictions or what's most or least likely to happen on my bold prediction list? Best answer gets next video shout out. Thanks to the world for watching. Stay tuned for all types of new content coming up. This has been D Flow. See everyone next video.